Hello and welcome to the video tutorial for uh, serial correlation for Econ 4650. Uh, the objectives of this video tutorial are that uh, we're going to look at pure and imp impure serial uh, correlation. We're going to learn how to detect it and we're going to learn remedies for it. Alright, so uh, for the serial correlation video tutorial, the first thing we're going to do is produce simulated data to see what purely Ser sorry, pure serially correlated uh, error looks like. So um, here we go. First thing you want to do is say options. You want to turn off those significant stars. They will be not helpful to us today. And then you're going to set a seed so you can reproduce what's going on here. Uh, the one that was there was four sixes, so that's what we're going to do. And then um, we're going to start building um, that equation uh, that's on the top of the first page of the text guide. Uh, so we're going to start with the letter on the far right that looks like a V, that Greek letter nu, lowercase nu. So nu uh, is R norm 100. So it's 100 draws a random, um, random number there. And then uh, ERR, our error, is going to be rep um, 0 to 100. So we're telling R to create a vector that's got like 100 spots in it. That's going to be our errors. And uh, the first error, so error 1, is going to be equal to new 1 because the rest of our errors are going to be uh, derivatives of that f of the error before it, right? Sorry, not technically a mathematical derivative, just, you know, it's going to be like some amount rho times the error before it plus new. Anyway. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second. Okay, great. So for um, i in uh, 2 to 100, so for the rest of the errors in our set, do this. Uh, ERR, so error i, each error is going to be 0 0.95, so this is going to be our row value. You can kind of see how this is forming, right? Times the error of the value before it, so ERR times... Um, or not just, you know, ERR I minus 1, so just 0.95 times the error of the I uh, before it, um, and plus uh, new of I. Great. So that's that. And then let's plot this uh, thing. And that looks great. Okay, and uh, and we're gonna put a line in it at zero. So a b line uh, h equal to zero, color equal to red. Okay, so that's our serially cor uh, correlated errors, and now we're gonna generate some time series data based on these uh, errors. So x is uh, some sequence of numbers um, from one to one hundred uh, with a length of one hundred. So uh, now we're going to coerce it into being a time series vector um, or object. So um, x is uh, TS x itself uh, with a frequency value, we're going to say, of uh, 12. And uh, the start time, 1990. And uh, we're going to build a y value off this stuff. So y. That's 2 plus 0 0.5. Remember that 0 0.5 is going to come in handy in a minute. Uh, times the, the x there plus our error, right? The error that we just made. Great. And now let's plot this uh, x and y here. So plot x, y, and turn off the labels because we're going to be, uh, and we're actually going to want to see the points, not just the labels. Um, if you don't understand why we turn off the labels, try it without doing that, and you'll see why. Great. So there's our fake data that is serially correlated. Uh, let's conduct a regression on this and build a 95% confidence interval on this data. So we're going to say model 1 is a uh, regressor. Let's see, it's going to be uh, LM of X on Y. So uh, Y is going to be X. And look at the summary of that. 
Okay. Um, the T values are huge. Uh, or, sorry, this T value is huge. Um, and uh, we're going to pay attention to that later. So just keep that in mind. This isn't very helpful right now. But um, And then what's the confidence interval? And you can see actually up here that the estimate looks pretty close too, which, which is funny, right? So uh, confidence model 1. So here you can see that the 5% confidence interval uh, actually does not include what the true parameter was of uh, uh, the beta of x, which we know is 5, right? Because we made it. So this is an example uh, that although OLS estimates are unbiased in the presence of serial correlation, um, the standard uh, errors of the estimates uh, actually are thrown off. And uh, in this example, um, the confidence interval is too short uh, because of the bias in the estimate of the standard error. Right, uh, so you can correct this by widening the standard error, uh, which is something we're going to do um, in a couple sections. So that is uh, the first section. So for the uh, second section, uh, detecting serial correlation, we're going to be um, looking at uh, the Durbin-Watson test uh, based on the D statistic. And to calculate the D statistic, we're going to want to get rho a hat and um, there's a fast way to do that and then there's like the manual way so we're gonna do it kinda manually so you can see what's going on and then we'll do it um, the easy way right so here we go uh, we wanna load up the DYNLM package so library uh, DYNLM um, if you don't have it installed uh, which I guess I wouldn't expect you to <laughs> I do because I've run through this uh, before. Um, uh, so, but if if you don't have it installed, be sure and install it. Um, if you don't remember the command, it's a uh, it's install dot packages, um, and then with uh, dy and lm in quotes, or you can go up here packages and data and go through here. Uh, we're using this package because it allows you to work with. Um, uh, or to mess with uh, linear modeling of time series uh, type objects uh, while preserving some properties in them. So anyway, whatever. Uh, let's create um, a time series object of the uh, OLS errors. So ERR OLS. Again, this is the first step and we're going to calculate row hat. And if you don't know what row hat is, um, Please review the chapter or at least the paragraph under the section heading on the text guide. So, error OLS, uh, so TS um, model one dollar sign resid, right? So we're pulling out the errors there. Uh, and then um, ERR model is uh, DYNLM, right? So that's the function call here. And then error OLS. Um, and the right hand side of this regression is going to be L, which is, stands for like lag. So we're going to lag uh, this object, error OLS, by one. That's what we're doing, right? So we're regressing the lagged error on the regular error. And uh, we're going to look at this real quick. Make sure I got this all right. Um, and basically, this is your row hat right here. So that's how you can get row hat. And uh, since we have row hat, we can calculate the critical value of the D statistic. So that's equal to like 2 times 1 minus your row hat value. So 0 0.90912. Um, and it's attempting to apply non-function. So that's an error. Don't forget your little multiplication sign. <laughs> Okay, great. So anyway, the point is we went from, we just calculated our row hat and then we transformed it into a critical D value of uh, 0 0.1817. And you're thinking, big whoop, uh, what does that mean? And uh, if you go ahead and you um, look at page 409 in the uh, uh, custom edition of the text there, uh, you know that n, our number of observations, was 100. So you go down to the bottom row there, and the k, the number of explanatory variables uh, excluding constant, was 1. And so there's a critical lower and upper value for the d statistic. And our value is below the lower value, hence we can reject uh, the null hypothesis that rho is uh, 0. Um, 
and uh, hence we can find evidence of uh, um, multicollinearity. So that's great. Um, and let's see, now we can have R calculate this statistic. Uh, I guess I kind of jumped the gun on the explanation there. Oh well, so if you load up uh, L LM test, let's say library LM test, uh, and again, if you don't have that package, you need to install it. Uh, and then DW test uh, is the command and model one, and it'll pull out, what do you know, it's our same critical uh, statistic there. And uh, this DW test command is spitting back a uh, one-tailed um, uh, test here, which is fine. So uh, anyway, and then you can also kind of see uh, there's a description there in the text about what to do when you're testing for negative serial correlation. Um, uh, we're not, so that's fine. If the value uh, was, if the critical value that we had calculated was in between the upper and lower um, uh, D values on the table, then we would have an inconclusive test. But ours is definitely lower. It's definitely in a zone where we can reject the null hypothesis. So um, that is great. And now um, let's uh, look at an example of uh, when there's not serial correlation. So let's create some data uh, like that. So Y2 is going to be our uh, new thing. And it's going to be 2 plus uh, 0 0.5. Uh, times x plus uh, new, and remember new is just random uh, error there, so our model 2 is going to be um, this lm uh, y2 and uh, x, and then looking at uh, a DW test of model 2, uh, here we have a Durbin-Watson value that is above um, the upper critical value, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. Um, and uh, we can say that there is no evidence of positive serial correlation there, so that is great. Uh, and next, let's see, uh, we can use the Durbin Watson uh, procedure to test for impure serial correlation. So, impure serial correlation is a serial correlation that happens because of a specification error, not because of uh, some problem with the uh, uh, variables itself. Uh, so, that is uh, kind of cool. So, we'll let's uh, create some, let's create a scenario where that happens, right? So, Y3 is uh, 2 plus 0 0.01 uh, times, here we go, uh, x caret 2, x squared plus new. Okay, so we have like a squared value. This is going to like throw off our whole deal, right? So now if you plot this, you'll see uh, what's going on, right? So y th plot x and y3, um, and then uh, x, y labels false. Uh, so that's great. So this is like a nonlinear relationship. You can see that there. Um, and now we can estimate the model and do a Durbin-Watson and a reset test. So that's kind of cool. So model three uh, is uh, an LM linear model of X regress and Y3. So Y3 tilde X. Um, and then let's do a Durbin-Watson test on it. And you have a, uh, a very small um, Durbin-Watson va uh, value there. So you can go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. Um, and uh, you can say that there is some uh, e evidence of serial correlation there. Now, again, we know that this is going to be um, like created because of a specification error. But nonetheless, uh, we detected it with a Durbin-Watson test. So that's kind of cool, right? And next, we can run a reset test and see if it'll tell us uh, we, if we have a, a specification error, right? Uh, so your uh, uh, reset test has produced an F statistic very large, uh, 2,357, uh, which I think is probably large enough uh, for us to um, reject the null hypothesis of the F test involved there uh, that, in fact, um, the uh, true values are uh, jointly zero. So basically what we're saying is, yes, we have evidence that we have some kind of 
um, this specification. Great, and we should have known that because we tried to run a linear model on um, a relationship that is nonlinear. Okay, um, so now let's specify a model uh, with this um, data that uh, fits it better, right? So if we say model four is uh, LM Y3, and then uh, we're going to have a capital I, and inside there we're going to say uh, X raised to the two. So the capital I um, is a f is a function that tells R that uh, whatever is inside these parentheses uh, calculate it as it's written. Um, that's important because if you don't, uh, R might interpret the caret uh, symbol as something else inside of a function call or inside of a uh, formula call. So anyway, just write it like this and you'll be fine. Uh, great. And now we can do a Durbin Watson test on it and hopefully it'll um, treat us better here. So model four. Okay, so you have a Durbin Watson uh, critical value that is definitely above the upper uh, value, so you do not reject uh, the HO, and uh, therefore you're not finding evidence of uh, multicollinearity, so that's great. And um, and you can do a reset test of this, uh, and again you're gonna you can interpret this as uh, there not being evidence of uh, mis mis specification here. So uh, that is that. Okay, so for the final uh, part here, we're going to talk about uh, remedies. The text guide mentions three. Uh, one is you can uh, think if the regression is well specified in terms of the functional form and variable selection. Uh, and if not, you can try and change it. Uh, the second method is to use uh, generalized least squares, uh, which is more advanced. Uh, or you can do um, the Newey West uh, standard errors method, uh, which will uh, kind of preserve the um, uh, OLS slope estimates, but uh, give you uh, s um, an estimator of the standard errors that uh, is generally more accurate uh, than the uncorrected standard errors for large samples uh, which have serial correlation. And that is basically a quote grabbed from page 314 of the small, or of the custom edition, which explains what Newey West standard errors are. Great. Uh, so let's pull it out the sandwich package and uh, do it. So here we go. Um, library uh, sandwich, not dandwich, uh, sandwich. Again, you're going to need to install that if you don't have it. Um, so keep that in mind. And then uh, NW is going to be the function uh, Newey West, capital N, capital W, model one. Okay. And uh, let's look at that. And basically, this gives you a matrix back, and the main diagonal, uh, or sorry, the square roots of this, uh, these two values in the main diagonal here uh, are the standard errors. Um, so we can calculate uh, T statistics. Uh, for our previous uh, model with serial correlation as such. Model 1 dollar sign plot coefficient divided by square root of the diagonal of that matrix we just made NW um, and it cannot find function SWRT let's try SQRT okay uh, so there you go. So now you've got uh, T statistics which are lower than those based on conventional standard errors uh, and thus you're going to have uh, wider confidence intervals which brings it back to that uh, point we made before when the confidence interval is not wide enough. Uh, so anyway this is the T statistic uh, and you can compare that with uh, for example the T uh, statistic from X from model 1 uh, when we did not uh, adjust it as such. Thank you.